Hi everyone, we're group two and today we're going to talk about corn. We are Jennifer, Mizuki, Jesus, Joyce, and Emma. <clears throat> so corn comes from Teosinte, a wild grass plant, and indigenous people domesticated this plant in southern Mexico. The Native Americans brought corn up the Mississippi River and they taught European colonists how to grow this grain. The earliest corn plant was very small, and up until the 1800s, corn was mostly eaten by the poor, but after periods of breeding by Native Americans, pilgrims, and scientists, we discovered that allowing pollen from one corn plant to pollinate itself created an inbred plant. This hybrid plant was able to produce higher yield and was much, much more resistant to insects and pests. In the 1920s and 1930s, scientists developed methods to grow corn with bigger ears and closer together so that farmers could grow more corn on less land. Because of this, farmers were motivated to grow more corn and use it in as many ways as possible, such as using it as feed for livestock. So in 1813, um, the first use of ground grain was used for animal feed, feed and at the end, the end of the 19th century was marked as the industrialization of animal feed. In 1882 was the first corn glutton, and in, in 1870s, um, we produced the first batch mixed feed. Um, in 1870, the first batch mixed feed was reported in Massachusetts, but it was only after the first animal nutrition books that the industry took off as a whole. Um, corn grain was used in beef cattle production, and it makes up a large portion of cattle diets at the end of their life cycle in a period called the finishing period. And it was fed to cattle in this phase because it increases carcass quality grades. Um, in this graph, um, you can see the changes in the distribution of production over time. And as you can see, for the most part, U.S. production and world production are similar, and it's been increasing. Before we dive into production and consumption, we're going to talk about a different types of corn. Maize, it, how it's defined, totally depends on the region, databases, author. So we're going to explain as it shows up in the slides. Sweet corn is what humans consume as corn. Fresh canned or frozen. So it is what you probably imagine you, when you think about corn. Field corn, on the other hand, is grown to feed livestock for ethanol production and manufactured goods. Within field corn, corn grain is used as feed for ethanol and corn products such as corn oil, corn starch, cereal products. Corn silage is a feed directly given to livestock after being chopped and fermented. It is also a substitution for pickled cabbage, which is fed in winter, whereas fresh grass is fed in summer. Next slide, please. So production and consumption. Nationally, the US produces 827 billion pounds of corn grain, 2265 billion pounds of corn silage, and 7.5 billion pounds of sweet corn. As you can see in the graph, corn grain accounts for the majority of corn production. Uh, as a, at a state level, Iowa produces the most corn grain, Wisconsin produces the corn silage, Minnesota is the top state for the sweet corn production. These top three states are in the corn belt, which we're gonna talk about later. In terms of the yield, Washington is the top state, and that means Washington produces more yield in a smaller area. For the consumption, we use the FAO data. I'm sorry. Um, the supply capacity supply quantity is 26.6 pounds per capita per year. And maize and products does not include sweet corn. So we provide a sweet corn consumption, which is 20.3 pounds per capita. US is the net exporter for the corn and top two importers are Mexico and Japan. 
Next slide, please. For the net balance, we use the data from FAO production quantity and supply quantity and US Census Bureau. And as you can see in the graph, we are the net producer of corn and only 1.06% of corn produced in the US is consumed. Next slide. Uh, what is corn made into? Sweet corn is either um, shipped fresh or made into frozen or canned corn. Field corn has a variety of uses, which include ethanol and biofuels, feed for livestock, corn, corn starch, or corn meal, which is then made into a bunch of foods such as chips, cereals, and bread. It is also made into high fructose corn syrup, which is in a lot of processed foods such as soda and candy. We created a diagram to further dive into the food or into the corn system. So after the corn leaves the farm, we categorized it into two sections, sweet corn and field corn. Sweet corn is divided into fresh or processed corn, then packaged, transported to ports, then to food retailers, and ultimately ends up to the consumer. Um, and then for field corn, we divided it into grain and silage. Silage is fed to animals and grain is sent to mills to be made into high fructose corn syrup, cornmeal or starch, non-food uses such as biofuels and feed. We would like to note that the byproducts and biofuel production also is, are also fed to animals, but mainly silage is fed to the animals. There are also other factors that come into play, such as tillage, soil health, technology, pesticides, monoculture, carbon footprint, etc. The green arrows indicate the positive influences, whereas the red indicates the negative. Um, for example, tillage and monoculture negatively affects so soil health, which ultimately affects corn farms because there is a biodiversity loss, which causes less resilience and soil health itself is poor, which could result in less corn production. As for the subsidies, it affects the corn farms negatively because it makes small and medium farmers nearly impossible to compete with the larger farmers. And it also leads to monopoly. It also affects consumers negatively in terms of the their anti unhealthy food choices. Next slide, please. A corn as feed. So corn is the primary U.S. feed grain, accounting for more than 95% of total feed grain production and use. And you can see in the top right corner that there is a USDA graph um, displaying how much corn grain is used from production in feed. And um, the number of feed grain farms in the United States has declined in recent years. However, the acreage per corn farm has risen. Therefore, the number of large corn farms have increased while the number of smaller corn farms has fallen. Um, corn use for ethanol has greatly increased the production of corn as well, accounting for 40% of total corn use. And um, dry distiller grains, which comes from ethanol production, is also a part of feed as well. Um, so feed use is related to the number of animals that are fed corn. Um, the amount of corn used for feed also depends on the crop supply and price, the amount of supplemental ingredients used in feed rations, and the supplies and prices of competing ingredients. Um, many parts of the corn plant are used in the industry, and several types of corn are grown primarily for their industrial applications. However, corn grain is processed um, by wet milling and also dry milling, and these are how you find the byproducts of dried distiller grains. And um, dried distiller grains can be used to feed animal livestock and it's a, 50, a 56 pound bushel of corn can produce 17.4 pounds of dried distiller grains. Um, this form of grain is mostly used for cattle that produces dairy and beef. However, it has increased in rations for hogs and poultry. Some environmental considerations to know are uh, the Corn Belt. Um, it's a historic territory in the Midwest United States uh, that has dominated the corn production since 1850s and includes the states of Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Ohio. It stretches from the panhandle of Texas up to North Dakota and East Ohio. The amount of corn harvested in this region annually has increased by 400% since 1950 from 2 billion to 10 billion bushels. 
Uh, monoculture uh, is the practice of growing one crop species in a field at a time. Uh, it's widely used in uh, industry farming systems, uh, conventionally and organic, and has allowed uh, for increased efficiency in pining and harvest. Uh, however, uh, monocropping can lead to unsustainable environments such as building up disease pressure and reducing particular nutrients in the soil. Uh, we have here some uh, data uh, that shows the, the total U.S. Uh, harvested for uh, corn, which is uh, 18 million acres. Uh, crop and livestock products uh, is uh, uh, it's about a fourth of the, of the total uh, agricultural land. And down here, uh, we have the, the breakdown of that, of that land usage. Um, it, it broken down in corn silage and uh, sweet corn there. Um, some other environmental and sustainability considerations is uh, soil degradation, uh, nitrogen depletion, and soil tillage, which go hand in hand. Uh, so soil tillage is the preparation of a good seed bed, which helps the germination of seeds uh, through the me mechanical manipulation of soil which uh, causes disruptions in the soil ecosystems. Uh, natural org organisms are damaged. Uh, this practice depletes the soil nutrients, which in turn requires the need for man-made nutrients and fertilizers, nitrogen and phosphorus in particular, uh, which are uh, highly used in uh, corn production. Uh, maize farming is, uh, uh, it's been established that 40% uh, of the nitrogen uh, pollution is from contributed fertilizers uh, application in corn as it requires relatively high levels of nitrogen as well as phosphorus fertilizers. If applied properly, it makes uh, individual plants grow stronger and increases yields. Excessive nitrogen, however, can be lost by leaching off as runoff or by passing off as vapor uh, through volatilization, potentially polluting the air or water systems. And as you all can see, um, uh, based on this research done by Iowa State University, corn requires more and more water based on bushel per acre. Um, eutrophication and acidification is also important to note. Uh, it's a phenomenon caused by an excess uh, nutrients from runoff, nitrogen, phosphorus, again, in particular, which increases the, the amount of plant algae uh, and algae growth in eustress and the coastal waters. Uh, this lowers the pH of seawater and uh, leads to acidification. Acidification slows the growth of fish and uh, shellfish and can prevent uh, shell formation uh, and mollusk uh, life. And um, this, is also, this is important because mollusk population, uh, such as oysters, clams, and scallops naturally reduce nutrients through their filter feeding activities. Um, biodiversity, of course, uh, is important to note because uh, for many domestic crops, domesticated crops, wild varieties do not exist in current areas of cultivation. Nevertheless, uh, regions where crop species originated are particularly vulnerable, particularly vulnerable to transgenic gene flow into local varieties or land races. Some farmers and agricultural landowners fear that transgenic varieties with a competitive advantage might gradually displace a valuable genetic diversity. A great example of this is in Mexico where transgenic corn is prohibited, uh, where it is home to over 100 unique varieties. And finally, transportation. Uh, trucks are the primary mode of transportation for corn used domestically um, that are uh, that all comes with increase of air pollution, wear and tear on the roads. It creates new infrastructure needs, such as for hard surface access roads and turning, acceleration and deceleration lanes, as well as trucker needs uh, when, low, when demand is low. Oh, so the benefits of corn include genetically modified corn reduces the need for pesticides. Economic wise, the expansion of technology leads to an increase of job employment. Since the corn production is so large, there are many job opportunities. In terms of subsidies, it provides constant income, which uh, helps financially, provides cheap products, a more self-sufficient as a country, keeps supply or keep stable food supply in some cases nitrogen fertilizers and tillage practices practices could be beneficial such as uh, the use of nitrogen fertilizers was found 
To increase the plant height, overall, we found that there were more trade-offs than benefits when it comes to corn production. Citations, are there any questions? <laughs> 